All right, so in this video, what I want to show you is how to use the notebook-like experience within um, VS Code with Conda. So we already figured out how to do that, um, obviously, with um, uh, cloud environments. But if we want to get this set up locally, uh, we're going to need a couple of extensions. Or maybe, well, at least we're going to need Jupyter. But what we can do is if we go ahead and make a new file here, I'm going to call it app.ipynb. I'm not sure how I've memorized that at this point. But that is stands for Iron Python in this YNB, I guess, kind of for Jupyter Notebook. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, so the J is represented as, or sorry, Jupyter is represented as the Y. So Iron Python Notebook. Okay, that's the way I'm going to remember it from now on. I'm going to make a new code block here. And I'm going to do, I want to uh, require something. So we'll say Python, or what is it, um, import.env, because that's how we're going to bring in that there. I'll hit run. And notice right away it pops up, because right now there's no kernel. It doesn't know about Conda. It doesn't even know about WSL. As if you've installed WSL and you don't have um, a particular plugin here, it might not work. But I'll click it here. And here I can see Python 3.12.3. Uh, and I don't want to use that. What I actually want to use is the mini Conda environment. This is the same environment down here. So this one's that's installed. I know it's recommending it. And this is the base one. But we really want to go to hello. And this might just work, surprisingly. I, I'm surprised that just works. So sometimes what you need to do is install a couple things, and maybe they're already installed here. So I already have WSL installed. Okay, another thing that you might need installed here if this is not working for you is remote desktop, remote developer, uh, remote explorer, remote. Like I would, I would install this one. Like I have WSL installed, so it's working fine, but this one is super, super useful. In fact, um, I'm right now uh, remote, I remoted into this machine using remote desktop, but I could, uh, connect to this machine through this plugin and then not have to uh, work through this here. But I don't have that set up here today. I'm not, I'm not planning to show, uh, show that here. So um, that's that. But anyway, there's that. And then there's also Jupyter. So I think here, if I go here, I want to see what extensions I have installed. Show running extensions. And so there's one called Jupyter as well that you'll need. But anyway, when you click this, it normally will ask you to install them and you just say yes. But if you don't, you know, we'll just type them in, Jupyter here, <laughs> Jupyter, you got to type it right. And so you can see I already have this installed, and it might have installed a few other ones as well. So just let it install whatever it wants to install. But the idea is over here is we have our kernel. And it picked it out from here, but normally you're supposed to create an IP kernel um, within it, which we'll show in the next video. But all I want to show you is that this is connected to Conda. And so we have .env. And so what I want to do is I want to make a new file called .env. And in here, I'm just going to make uh, something called, it doesn't really matter what it is. It's going to be like, hello world. This is a, we're setting basically an environment variable here. Okay. And we'll go back over to here. And so I have .env. Um, and I think it's .env load. .env, and so what that will do is it will load it. I usually always have my imports on a separate line here. Okay, so we've run this one. Running cells requires IP kernel package. Okay, so that's something that we don't have installed. And so I was thinking that, yeah, I was thinking that uh, we wouldn't need this till we, um, we did the next one, but IP kernel won't work if, unless you have this installed. So it looks like we do need to have it. And it's doing like update dependencies, force reinstall. I don't know if we have to do all of that. And I would probably write this a little bit differently. So I'm going to go back over to here. And so I thought this would be for the next video, but it's for this one. And so if we want to um, we'll go over to here, as this is a separate video, we'll go here and say new folder. This is um, VS Code um, notebook.md. So what we need to do, oh, I always make it a, <laughs> a folder. I promise you I'm a really good coder. If you saw me in uh, um, uh, MacVim, you'd be like, wow, Andrew, you're really good. But I am working in this editor here. So I would probably do conda mm, install hyphen C conda forge. Like the other one will, will work, but this is probably better, IP kernel. Okay, so this is the way that we can actually create our own kernels, IPY kernel. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy this here. I'm probably going to just have to write it again. Yep. 
And so say conda, make sure again, you are in the correct environment. Conda install hyphen C conda forge IPY kernel. We'll hit enter. And so that is now installing IPY kernel. I kind of feel like after you do that, you usually have to do something else, but maybe not. So let's go ahead and give this a go. Let's try this again. And it's complaining. So I'm going to go ahead here and let me close this out here for a second. Don't save. We'll go back into this. Let's run it again. No, it's still complaining. So let's go take a look up at IPY kernel. I always feel like there's some step after it that I forget. IPY kernel. Okay, I'm just doing this on my other machine here. Mm. So we have pip install python hyphen m ipy kernel conda create new environment. See, it probably would have been easier if we created this environment that way. So what I'm going to do because probably we could have like restarted and did what it asked us to do, but it might be just easier to just delete this environment and start over. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, conda deactivate. And we're going to do conda um, mm, remove hyphen n hello uh, hyphen hyphen all y. Then after that, we're going to recreate the environment. So conda create hyphen n hello, Python 3.10.0, but we want to bring in uh, IPY kernel at that stage. And I'll just make our lives a lot easier if we always remember to do that. So let me just go find that folder here. And so here it just says IPY kernel. But then over here it's saying hyphen m install user. So I wonder if we still have to do that. Okay, so maybe we just had to run this line here. We don't have to actually uninstall. We didn't uninstall yet, have we? No, okay, so let me just try to run this single line here. What it does, I do not remember. So say no kernel exists, so okay, that's fine. So what we'll do <laughs> is we'll take this line here and we'll bring it into our instructions. And the other thing I want here is, sorry, I got a little thing moving on my desk here. Um, IPY kernel, right? And so now we'll go through and uh, run through all this. So the first thing is I want to do conda deactivate, conda remove hyphen n hello hyphen, uh, hyphen, hyphen all hyphen y. So that's going to remove that environment. We're going to recreate from scratch, hyphen n, hello. We said Python equals 3.10.0, IPY kernel. And I think like when you just put anything after that, it's just going to install that. So we could actually put more packages here if we wanted to. Like if I want a torch, I could probably put it there. But I'm just going to do IPY kernel here today. And then I'm just going to do a pip list to see what's installed. Oh, well, sorry, we got to activate. So we're going to do conda activate. Mm, conda activate uh, hello. We created that environment, right? Oh, okay, so it's saying that package doesn't exist. Did we type it wrong? Maybe we typed it wrong. IPY kernel. I mean, it looks right to me. Let me double check. IPY kernel. Hmm. Yeah, so like this one here says IPY kernel here. Source, activate my environment, and then do IPY kernel. For example, using con environments, in install my Python kernel in a first environment. So Python hyphen M. Yeah, so I mean, like that's what we did, more or less. Hmm. <laughs> well, sometimes when just making these things from scratch, we'll be have less of an issue. So I'm just going to do three zero. I could have swore we could have done it on a single line there, but maybe we had to do like hyphen C conda forge. I've definitely done that before on a single line, but that's totally fine if that doesn't want to work here today. And we'll do hyphen Y. 
And I'm gonna try this again. So it's conda install uh, IPY kernel. I think that if you don't um, specify conda, uh, conda forge, it will still pull from there. Oh, we didn't activate the, the, the one. That's, that's something, it's very easy to forget to do that. Do um, conda install IPY kernel. Okay, so didn't find it. See, that's why I think you need conda forge. Oh, okay, so it's still not finding it. So maybe we never installed it this entire time. IPY kernel. Am I crazy? Do I not know how to install that? IPY kernel. Am I spelling it wrong? Am I putting an A in there? Yeah, I am. That's probably why it hasn't been working this entire time. So maybe maybe that was my big problem. I just was typing it wrong, and you're like, Andrew, you're crazy. And I bet it would have worked as a single line as well. So we could probably go back to this. Uh, so we'd have um, conda activate. And so now it makes me think that this could have always been um, IPY kernel, like that. Uh, so I'm going to type in pip show, or sorry, pip list. Okay, so I'm going to go and, I know this is tedious, but I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to deactivate it. Because I want to know, um, okay, that's great, Defender, thank you. I want to know definitively that it can do it. So I'll go conda, remove, hyphen n, hello, hyphen, hyphen all, hyphen y. It's going to remove everything. We'll try this again. Conda create, hyphen n, hello, Python 310, uh, Python equals 310, zero, IPY kernel, hyphen y. And let's see if that works. Okay, and so now what I want to do is do conda activate, hello. And we'll do conda, or sorry, pip list. Do we have IPY kernel? We do. Okay, so the question is, do we have to run this weird line, which I don't know what it does. I don't know what hyphen M is. Um, it looks like it's installing it for the user. But let's go ahead and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file up here. And we'll try to bring this down here. I want to select a kernel. So now it should be kernel compatible, like we have the kernel created. So it doesn't even show it here. I'm gonna give this a refresh. Mm. Yeah, so it's not showing it. One second here. This could be a little bit finicky. I don't trust this. I'm gonna close it out. I'm gonna reopen it in VS Code. And I'm going to first switch over. Well, we don't really need to switch over right now, but we'll switch over. We'll say um, conda activate hello. And I'm going to go back up to here. Hit run. It's going to complain because we don't have an environment selected. I want to select a different one. Python environment. There we go. So. Isn't it interesting that I just like restarted and now it's okay. I like how this indicates that it's a conda environment. This one's not, but it is. Okay, so now we're using 3.10. And I mean, we don't have that module installed, right? So that kind of makes sense. So it's not necessarily that it's not working. It's just that we don't have it installed. So, you know, again, we can install it this way using this one. Uh, another way that we could install it is we could also just add it as a line of code. So you could do the, you could do the pip requirements.txt if you want there. But I wanted to show this anyway. So we have pip install um, dot env or python dot env. Okay, so we can do that here. And so that will install it here. Sometimes I like to silence it. So I'll do a hyphen q on that and I'll make it a little bit cleaner. You can also do like uh, interjection, but um, I do percentage and maybe I do it wrong. Sometimes it tells you to restart the environment when you do that, but it's probably fine in this case. So now there's no problem. Then we run this one, which is good. And then uh, we'll need to import OS. So I'll do it over here, import OS, and I'll save it here. And so what I want to do is print out uh, the environment. So let's say OS environ, and it, which is for environment, and this will be for hello. And then we'll go ahead and print that. And it says environ object is not callable. Maybe it's square braces. I don't know. I thought it was that. 
Unless there's like a dot after it. Environ dot get, maybe? This is not my uh, primary language, so I'm always get, kind of guessing. There we go. And so we have it. So yeah, it looks like we don't need this third line here, but I have seen it before. Right? And that makes it so that it shows up as an IPY kernel. If you don't install this, I thought we we're going to do this in the next video, but um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but this is the proper way to do it. Now that I have it here, this totally makes sense. Uh, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing. But often you are you are fiddling with this. And I could be on like 10 different machines and have 10 different problems, even though we're following the same instru instructions. So don't get discouraged if this doesn't work perfectly for you. Um, but if you're going to want to do local development, it is a little bit of a challenge, OK? So in the next video, what I want to show you is installing Jupyter Lab Server. As this is fine, but you might also want a Jupyter Lab Server as it's just a different experience, OK? So I'm going to stop the video here. I'm leaving everything as it is. And I'll see you in the next one, OK? Ciao.